And a good evening to everybody here in Fairfield, Connecticut and worldwide. This is 88.5 FM WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut. Joe Kelly doing a tune on a Monday night for the next two hours. And we are always excited and, and honored when we have our next guest, who's been a friend of our show for quite a while. And uh, last time we spoke, it was uh, just a day or two after the passing of her her dear friend and mentor, Prince, and we appreciate her coming on during that time. But uh, this is a, a really happy time because she has uh, ready to drop her new record, I Am the Storm, and uh, we welcome Tamar Davis back to the Upper Room. How you doing, Tamar? Hey, hey, guys. Hi. <laughs> yeah, brand new record, and, um, you know, it's it's been a while, but you've been hard at work on your music. Um what what takes so long to to get a record out these days? And, and it's not uncommon for for most artists. Man, I mean, I know each artist has different stories. I know for me, I've been working on my album. I mean, this one is at least maybe seven years old. I mean, because the mm-hmm. first one was with musicians I work with with Tyler. Right. And then uh, this particular album just started with someone that was just a huge fan of mine. And come to find out his talent was just like crazy amazing uh, he's actually my nd for my new show um as i get ready for a promotional tour right and so we just we just been working honestly i just kind of put it aside i don't know if a lot of people know you know as an independent artist i'm just now starting to read comments on youtube and it's just interesting to see people assume if they know the life of an independent artist and it is such a grind you know unless you have you know, the prince is behind you, which he was, he blessed me to be able to be around him and perform with him or someone to push you out there financially um, or whatever. And to also take the, the tutelage of things that Prince taught, you know, you mm-hmm. can't just sign your life away. That's the reality. And so I chose to not only take his, his, his input and his, his, his lessons, but I mean, I've had to just grind it out and hustle it out as best as I can and the doors have completely continued to open. And so in that process, I started doing theater, you know, because as some people say, it paid the bills, but at the same time, it opened up so many more doors Mm -hmm. for me to build more relationships. And so over time, I just kept building the relationships and meeting new writers and and musicians. And and so it finally came to the point where once I got off the voice and it kind of happened so suddenly, um, it just made me say, okay, that's it. Music forever. Like, I gotta focus on this music. I gotta finish this second album. Um, and that's really what made me finally just put the finishing touches on it. But the album is, was, we started it like seven years ago. We were taking right. off songs, putting on songs, speaking songs, <laughs> editing songs, flying in musicians, sending music off to musicians. I mean, you know, it was, it was a whole process, so. Yeah, uh, the, the album's called I Am the Storm, right? Yeah, it's called Eye in the Storm. Yeah. Well, what's the explanation for, for the exact title? You know, it's crazy. Um, I actually ended up finding on Pinterest, I'm a huge Pinterest girl, uh-huh. um, there's a quote that I actually found yesterday and had no idea it was going to be about the album. So basically it said, the devil whispered in my ear, you're not strong enough uh, to withstand the storm, but today I whispered in the devil's ear, I am the storm. Oh, it was like wow. so crazy. And that's a Exactly what the album like where it came from um the title track was created my um my husband actually wrote the song oh, and okay. he was just kind of he was actually kind of like talking to me about it he was like you know why do people always say like you know you're going through these hard times you're going through the storm and he's like why don't you just become that why what if you are the catalyst to other things happening and you are the storm as the catalyst for other right. people's lives to be blessed and changed and He's like, what if you are that that change? What if you are that shaken up person? What if you are that person that's telling the truth when other people aren't telling the truth? What if you are that um, that drama in a good way, you know, for other things to happen and for things to just finally be done and productive and move forward? And so that's where it came from, and we ended up um, creating that song from the ground up. I mean, we got Rick Marcel on the guitar. I mean, you close your eyes. I thought I was ta- listening to Prince for a minute. It was emotional attachment. Because it was the very last song on the album. Right, That's right. what was so weird. The, the, the album was called I in the Storm, but it was the very last album that was created, the song that was created. So yeah. that's so, how it came about. Hey, and c- congratulations. Uh, you're a newlywed, and you mentioned your husband, and, uh, you know. Yeah. That, that's great, you. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't have come at a better time. Mm-hmm. Um, 
of course, I would have loved for Prince to have met him because he met everyone else in my family, like my aunts and best friends. You know, he threw a private party for me and my family. So it would have been great if he would have been able to meet him. But, um, yeah, he's such a godsend, and I, I absolutely love him, especially through this difficult, crazy time, you know, in April. It was just, yeah, it was yeah. so glad. I was so glad to have him. Yeah. Everybody's still still reeling from 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 April twenty first, and uh, it's going to take a who who knows we'll ever get over it, right? Yeah, I don't think we'll ever get over it. You know, I rarely talk about it. I, I mean, I had to tell God and ask God to forgive me because I really thought Prince was immortal. I mean, yeah. he was just so vibrant, and you know, he ate good. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it was just kind of like, oh, he's always going to be here. You know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. crazy. Well, well, Tamar Davis is is our special guest right here on the Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF, and uh, we got to get into some music and, and direct our listeners to go to TamarDavis dot com. I know you can pick up the new record "I Am the Storm" at CDBaby dot com. It, it's also available at all, other outlets, I'm sure, right? Yeah, iTunes. I think it's stre- it's streaming everywhere. It's on it's on Tidal and Spotify, and of course, I have my own Pandora station. So, of course, it's been there and. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is uh, one of the songs from I Am the Storm from Tamar Davis. It's called I Want to Be Free. And uh, we'll talk more with Tamar in just a few moments. Right, that is brand new music from our special guest, Tamar Davis. And uh, it's from I Am the Storm. The song's called I Want to Be Free. And she's free and independent artist. And uh, Tamar, i uh, got to say, DJ, um, my great friend, DJ Jedi, of Jedi Nation, <laughs> wanted me to say hello to you, and uh, you know, hi to Jill Primus and and Jill Monroe as well. They all they all love you, Morris Mills as well. You got a lot of fans hey. out there. Yeah. Hey guys! Yeah, people are excited about the new record, and uh, this interview will be archived uh, later in the week at Upper Room with Joe Kelly dot com if you're just tuning in. So, I am the storm, and uh, hey, you just had a, a CD release party out your way, right? Yeah, I did. I mean, I'm always, like, when I'm at Houston, I just, it's so much that's not here that could be here. And, you know, so this is the first one. I'm getting ready for one um, on the East Coast. And then, of course, one in L.A. Chicago is one of my biggest markets, so definitely trying to plan one there. Um, but it, Saturday just blew me away. Like, I just could not stop crying. Like, so many people showed up. People I didn't know. It was ironic. Like, there were four girls that were there before we started, the event started. And she was a fan of mine. She was just like, oh, my God. She just comes up to me. She's like, I'm, I'm Tamar. She was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm so-and-so. And I was like, oh, okay, nice to meet you. I was like, yeah, are you here for the party? She was like, I didn't even know about it. And so uh-huh. it was just crazy. Like, people were just there, didn't even know about it, you know. So it was cool. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, where, where was the party at again? It was at um, a place called The Middle Spoon. Okay. Um, and it's a local eatery and lounge. And people were just like... They were like, gosh, this place is beautiful. It's this, it's that, it's this, you know. So it was cool. And it was a great weekend all around because uh, Lamar Miller and company got, got a W for, for the Texans, right? Oh, gosh, finally. <laughs> I was like, thank you. I can finally go to sleep. Right. I'm so proud of the Texans. In a perfect world, because Super Bowl will be here next year, like it would be so good if the Texans could go up against the Cowboys because I would probably lose my voice because I'm a Cowboys fanatic. But I'm a Texan girl, so oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I love you, Tamer. But the, the the Cowboys. I'm a Giant fan, so uh, it's it's tough to root for the Cowboys. <laughs> oh yeah. no! But you're having a better se- you're horrible. having a better season this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah, my bro- my brother's got season tickets to the Dallas Cowboys, so you know, big uh, big big team. Yeah. Gosh, that's a, that's just like the best the best team ever. Yeah. They're the All American team. Uh, Tamar Davis has, has just had a storied career from young kid breaking in music course with uh, Kelly Rowland and Beyonce Knowles and the early version of uh, Destiny's Child, right? And uh, yeah, mo- moving along to uh, the Voice, and uh, people were excited about that. But uh, the vo- the Voice ended, and you were mentioning got to get this record going, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like. It's like, it's crazy because once you keep, continue to pursue your your hopes and dreams and desires, like you, something that you've learned in, on the way, it finally hits you in a moment. And the voice was one of those days. It was just like you know, when I left, I 
I didn't even cry. I just remember being in shock because I really wanted to continue to go far. Mm -hmm. But then it was almost like God had to remind me, like my prayer was like, I really wanted maximum exposure. And I, it was almost like God said, okay, there was your maximum exposure. Now I'm ready for you to do what I want you to do. So it was crazy because I met a lot of fans from Brazil. Like Mm -hmm. I just could not believe the support from Brazil. Um, But yeah, I I mean, it just made me say like, okay, that's it. I'm all in now. You know, I was running away from music because it was so hard and doors have just been opening that I'm preparing for, for the beginning of the year um, because of this album and finally putting my stamp on saying I'm going to do it, you know, full throttle. Um, So, yeah. Yeah. TamarDavis.com. And uh, hey, we should get it. You mentioned uh, your work on the stage. Uh, You also uh, were part of the great, uh, Motown musical, the Barry Gordy inspired uh, Motown musical. How, how did you get into that? Oh my gosh, Motown the musical on Broadway. And it's crazy because, you know, a lot of places in the United States and across the world do their own Motown reviews. And so we were trained to make sure people understood this was the Broadway show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I actually went to see this show on Broadway. And okay. I just was like, oh my gosh, this show is incredible. And my mentor was just like, yes, can you see yourself doing it? I was like, yes. I just like emailed the director, Charles Randolph Wright, and he came to one of my shows in New York with the Nona Hendrix. So I'm like, Charles Randolph Wright, Mm -hmm. Nona Hendrix and Charles Randolph Wright are here to see me. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I auditioned. I flew to New York several times, and I ended up getting um, my part. I played like five different people, and I um, covered the Diana Ross track. And that was just like so surreal because you – I was working with the Barry Gordy. So it's like, you're working with Prince, you're working with Tyler Perry, but then it's like, Barry Gordy. You're like, Barry Gordy. And I played his sister, so I used to call him Junior all the time. So I'd be like, uh-huh. hey, Junior. And he knew, <laughs> he always knew who I was. And every right. time he saw me, he was just always complimenting something about my performance. And got a chance to meet Smokey Robinson and, and Edna and Edna Anderson and, you know, Mickey Stevens. And I mean, like, this man built a crazy empire of music that just brought us all together as different cultures. And it just was so honoring to do that show in the midst of all the social tension going on and racial tension. And right. it was like we were, we were rel- reliving that era. You know what I mean? And so it was great. It was absolutely great. Yeah. We, we, uh, we want to get into some more music from I Am The Storm. Uh, this is a nice ballad right here, Gift of Goodbye. And uh, any special meaning to this one? I'm sure there, uh, is. there is a this lot of This one is a deep one. You know, this is, this is a deep, deep, deep one. I wanted to get back to doing ballads. I actually hired an orchestra, um, and I paid for it, you know, just like believing it was going to be what it was, and it came out better than I thought. And the song was inspired by a sermon that I heard from Bishop T.D. Jakes, and I'm not like one of those people who listens to pastors and all this other stuff, but I just listen. When people send me something, I'll, I'll take a listen. And Bishop T.D. Jakes taught about having the power to say goodbye to things that were really detrimental to your life. It wasn't that you're being mean. It's just those things that keep reminding you of stuff or reminding you of hurt or anger or whatever. And I wrote this song very visual. And I start off by saying, I sit in silence. I'm listening to the rain. It was raining that day. Um, so it's called Gift of Goodbye. All right. From I Am The Storm, you can go to TamarDavis.com, CDBaby.com, iTunes, all the streaming services. It's all out there. Support your independent music and and, uh, a uh, great, great artist who the New York Times said her voice can, uh, I'm I'm paraphrasing here, can uh, cover three stadiums that powerful. (laughs) Hey, the New York Times, come on. Everybody knows the New York Times. I know. That's right. Tamar Davis, Gift of Goodbye. That is more great music, brand new music from our special guest tonight, featured guest, Tamar Davis, the gift of goodbye from I Am The Storm. And, uh, you know, uh, we were talking off air about preparations. You got a few things cooking uh, this week, right? Yeah, I have some performances coming up. I've been doing a lot of private events, ironically, um, which is so much fun because they're so personal. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just working with a new team of people. I've never had a manager and an agent and stuff. So it's pretty exciting just to hear the ideas that are generating. And it's just so exciting. Just so, so, so exciting. And then, um, just been auditioning for TV and film. So Mm -hmm. pretty excited. And, um, we were mentioning, you know, uh, beforehand, all, all your work with Prince and 
you you went back to to Paisley Park or, or Prince becoming acquainted uh, of your uh, talents way way back, right? And then it took a little break, and then you you got in the studio with Prince, right? By surprise. Yeah, when I was, um, I think, 11 or 12, I never remember the age, but um, I was flown out to Paisley Park, and I remember being in Paisley, and I recorded a version that he wrote for me for Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember doing photo shoots. I actually just saw that photo, so I've got to post it for a throwback Thursday. (laughs) But (laughs) Yeah, I remember having meetings, and I remember paperwork was going back and forth, and and that's all I remember. And Mm then... um, Morris Hayes sent a demo of mine. My cousin sent a demo to Morris Hayes. Right. And then I was blown back out. I mean, um, sorry. That's when, um, that's how I met him the very first time, or supposedly met him the first time. But 2005 is when I officially went up to him and introduced myself at his house, um, which is how 3121 was first, was in that actual house, because I was doing a video shoot with Fatima Robinson. She Mm -hmm. was the choreographer for that video shoot. Right. And that's a whole other long story short, but I just went up to him and was like, yeah, you, you know, you did a song for me somewhere over the rainbow. And next thing you know, I was in the studio, the house studio, and we were just jamming out, just rocking out and singing and creating, you know, melodies off the top of my head. And history was made from there. <laughs> now, now, we all know about Prince on stage by going to concerts and TV and everything, but, you know, not too many of us have seen him in the studio, the way he works and everything like that. Uh, you were you've worked together with Prince uh, for for various times, and how was he in the studio? Did he did he uh, record fast, or how did he call things in the studio? Yeah, so he has he, like you hear of how he might have recorded, but I was blown away because when we started recording thirty one twenty one, it wasn't even really like an album. Like no one knows that it, he never had an idea to record the album. So right, let me right. please let everyone know that. Mm-hmm. So. It started with the house parties. Um, once again, I, I'm an eight, I was born in the 80s, so I don't really know too much about Prince and his work ethic and stuff like that. And right. I remember I would get calls from people that I'd never even met, and they would be like, hey, congratulations, but, congratulations, but. And when I started working with him, I knew it was a spiritual connection because we kept doing these house parties. Mm-hmm. And he would come up to me, and he would laugh, and he'd be like, people... He'd be like, Tamar, people are asking me, who are you? And I'm purposely not saying your name. Right. And so he would laugh it off. And, cause it, was like, it was like he didn't even know what he was doing. He was just having fun. And so um, every time, you know, the Cowboys would say there was this girl that was performing at the house parties. And that no lie, we were at, um, what is it called? The, the recording facility, the rehearsal facility, Burbank Rehearsal uh, Studios. Right. It's by Burbank Airport where everybody rehearses. Mm-hmm. And we were rehearsing. It was me. Um, Cora, Josh, Morris, and Frank McComb. Right. And I'll never forget it. I got a call, and I, he, I heard he was just like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm in rehearsal, the rehearsal that you have us in. And he was like, oh, well, can you get on a flight tomorrow and um, come do some recordings? And I said, of course, okay. So I kept flying out there. I would leave our rehearsal from L.A. and fly to Minneapolis, and we would just record. I think we were recording um, the word... I think we started recording um, maybe Incense and Candles before I was really on Incense and Candles. Mm -hmm. And then by that third or fifth trip, he was like, what do you want? Do you want to record your own album? And I was just looking at him like, okay. Everything was just like, do you want to do this? I'd be like, okay. Do you want to do this? I was like, okay. And Uh so 3121 was being created while I kept flying there. Mm -hmm. And he never said, I'm doing an album. We just kept working and writing. So when we got to Beautiful, Loved, and Blessed, I, he was like, Tamar, I want you to write something very deep. And I said, okay. He was like, I want you to go deep, like real deep. Think about something no one's writing about. So I went to Studio B, and I started writing. He would come check on me, and finally he was just like, no, go deeper. When I wrote Beautiful, Loved, and Blessed, he was just like, that's it. And so I recorded it. He let me record in Studio A by myself. I was in the console room, because that's how he recorded. He recorded by himself in right. Studio A inside the console room. Mm-hmm. And by the time I recorded it, he was like, okay, I'm going to lay, lay a verse. Can I lay a verse? And I was like, okay. And so I'm leaving, and he says, no, 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 stay in here. I want you to record me. When I tell you, I almost cried. Uh-huh. I was like, record you? What do you mean record, record you? He's like, Tamar, hey, just press record. Just right. record me. And so he sang the second verse in the higher pitch. Right. And he said, do you like that? And I said, well, let me hear it in your lower natural tone. And then he sang it in the natural tone, and he was in tears, and I was in tears, and I was like, that's it, it's golden. And wow. um, 
Yeah, just thinking about it, just, yeah, the man was so, like, for me, I don't know how he was with anyone else, but he was family. Mm -hmm. The man allowed me to see him in his natural state. We joked all the time. We laughed all the time. If I had a business manager by the name of Joe Kelly, he ended up working with Joe Kelly. Right, if right. I liked caramel frappuccinos, he would say, what's that? And I'll say what it is. And next thing you know, I would come in the studio and there would be two of them. Wow. Like, that's just who he was. <laughs> You know, right. he he loved my ideas. He let me create the show that we did on the tour. He let me, you know, compile the album and the, the way it was going. He would say, Tamar, what colors are we wearing on tonight's performance? Sometimes he would pull up and we were wearing the same colors. Like, it was the craziest time of my life. And I could only say thank you to God for that opportunity. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. This, uh, yeah. No, go ahead. No, I mean, he, he made me and the twins, you know, choreograph our show, mm -hmm. you know, like, he, he just was that guy. He was just Uncle Prince to me, you right. know what I mean? Um, yeah. yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, we were talking off air about Prince, you know, Prince was your guitarist, yeah. and uh, Club Nokia in New York, um, and, and Bryant Park early in the morning, Good Morning America, I think it was, right? Yeah, Good yeah. Morning America. Right, right. See, seeing Prince that early perform doesn't happen too often on TV like that, but yeah. <laughs> yes. And he was wired up, like ready to go. I was looking at him like, oh my God, I got to get up. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a special time as, as well. And, um, you know, we mentioned before the Milk and Honey record you guys recorded, and I'm, I'm sure that well-preserved in the vault, let's hope. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I am not talking about Milk and Honey because you can't read what the media talks That's about. Right. Um, I never heard me, of that record. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's crazy. I know, right? I'm sorry, bro. You know, it's, <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. Um, it's just crazy because, you know, people don't really know, like, he and I talked up until the day of, you know, April. Mm -hmm. um, so, Milk and Honey could be in the vault or Milk and Honey could not be in a vault. Um, but Milk and Honey is is having some legs and, and about to walk, and I'm excited. I'm mm -hmm. just absolutely excited. Right. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, I am. You guys made <laughs> magic at Paisley Park in the house in uh, Los Angeles. And you, and you mentioned 3121, Michael Bland, um, who I believe played drums on that track. Um, yeah, you know, it's crazy. Michael yeah. Bland, um, I didn't know, once again, I didn't know. All I knew was Sheila E. Oh, That's okay. all I knew, right? Uh -huh. So when I saw Michael Bland in his pocket, was so crazy. I was like, God, you're amazing. Right. And Prince fell, fell out laughing, and he looked at Michael Bland. He was like, she doesn't know who you are. She's too young. Uh. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And so Prince was like, go home and Google him. Right. And the very next day, he was like, do you know who he is now? <laughs> yeah, he, he, yeah. Told me, he told me about that track. He's like, yeah, him and Sonny T called out to Paisley Park. They just started jamming. Have had no idea what, like, just as you mentioned, where this music was going to wind up or, you know, when they would get paid and whatever and, and what configuration these songs. And, you know, I guess that was part of the, the magic of Prince, the way he, he operated. Yeah, I mean, anyone who's worked with him, if you have not taken a part of his teachings, whether he verbally told you or if he showed you through example, you just missed the whole boat of why you guys were you were blessed to be around him and also him around us because he learned a lot from i know around when me and the twins were around he loved learning from us you know mm -hmm. and we loved learning from him and so when it came to michael bland and sunny they actually played on all i wanted you on my milk and honey album oh, okay. so while they were yeah. doing 3121 um i gave them the, the whole milk and honey album was all my ideas like i would sit at the piano and be like prince i hear something like this and they would take it and bring it to life so Michael Bland and Sonny were playing on, on All I Want Is You, you know, and that, for the record, was a one-take song. That, oh, that whole song yeah. was a one-take song. Mm -hmm. So that's how great he was. Like, he, he knew who to bring in, when to bring him in. Like, even if you were like, man, I want to work with you today, he'll be like, okay. And, but he already knew who was going to work on what, you know what I mean? It wasn't like a ostracizing people. He was always inclusive. Even if to you he was a mysterious person and not telling you everything, that was something that I knew I had to take away from him. Like, to this very day, people don't know what's up with Tamar. You don't know where I'm going, you know, every day. It's just something that I learned from him. And it's a protection factor, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, some, some, great, uh, some great memories of uh, Prince. 
from uh, his great friend Tamar Davis and uh, Tamar mm-hmm. uh, brand new record. We're talking about the brand new record. I am the storm. Pick it up now. Hello? And, oh, I'm still here. Still here. Yeah, it just yeah. keeps going in and out. I'm listening. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I was just saying TamarDavis.com, and uh, we will keep you uh, definitely up to date. I'm sure this is going to be an extremely busy time for you with, uh, you know, what what don't you do entertainment-wise? <laughs> you, you, Man, I don't know. I mean, I have some ideas coming up, you right. know. I have some things in the works of, you know, some other passions that I'm discovering. Don't want to give those away. and. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited, you know. I, I'm, I feel like I feel like him. Like he just made decisions on a whim, and that's just where I'm at. And I'm seeing it's it paying off, you know. Just being bold in what I want and what my desires are, and I have a love for people and teaching, and you know. So that's part of some other ventures that I'm working on now as well. All right, so let's play uh, the great song "Beautiful, Loved, and Blessed." Tamar and Prince together. Tamar featuring Prince and. Uh, you heard the story that uh, in the studio, how they recorded this and, and how emotional it was. So, hey, Tamar, much love to you and, and much love to your husband as well. And uh, Thank you. Yeah. Most important, people get this record. I am the storm, Tamar Davis. Thanks, Tamar. Thank you, guys.